All right. So uh, now we are going. This is module seven, I think, uh, and now we are going to um, go back to or go, you know, switch direction to textual data and textual streaming data and real-time data processing of textual data streams. So, um, <coughs> some examples of real-world big data applications, some challenges that occur and some applications. Um, and then I will give you demonstration of a live system that uh, supports that called Twitris. Um, in terms of technical background, there is a lot more than what I can present here. Uh, but uh, everything that I present has lots of technical material including number of papers. So, um, to the extent that you want to further follow up, just let me know and I will be happy to point you to the relevant uh, papers, presentations, uh, demonstration and so on and so forth. So, um, one of the uh, application area and one of the um, context in which I will start out uh, with is the social data for social good and in particular um, applications like crisis response coordination, harassment on social media, gender based violence, human trafficking, prescription drug abuse, uh, these, are, you know, these are some of the topics in which there is plenty of uh, near term and real time data that can help you. Uh, you know, make decisions. Um, some of them are also epidemiological in nature or longer term in nature where you can study over the period of time. Some of them are uh, valuable um, in terms of real time response. For example, crisis coordination or disaster coordination there um, time is of essence and people want immediate response. So, that part is lot more relevant to the velocity aspect of the things, but I am going to cover some related aspects a little bit there. So, let us look at um, the context of big data, big particularly social data um, during Hurricane Sandy. During the first uh, week, there were 20 million uh, tweets with Hurricane Sa and Sandy as keywords uh, during the first week. Our own system captured 4.9 million of those. And that um, it was on the Facebook, even though that occurred only in November or late October, November, uh, on Facebook it was second most popular event or topic throughout the year of 2012. So, that tells you the big aspect of uh, this thing. It also tells you the velocity aspect of the things that suddenly that big, you know, um, uh, amount of data that streams through and that uh, you could potentially utilize it. So, um, this is a little old figure just like I think we had some of the earlier things here, but uh, half a billion users. Now, this has gone to, um, uh, it certainly is 1 billion uh, tweets, um, uh, is it now week per week it has hit that or? It used to be 500 million per week. I don't know yeah, th that is what I have here and uh, 60 percent of the uh, data is um, created on mobile. Now, that is very important right because you are walking about, you are somewhere wherever you are and you are uh, uh, engaged in this conversation. So, human uh, data sensing, so citizen sensing as I call uh, that is happening and uh, so much of the data that would mean um, on these social data streams uh, that are created. Um, while people are on a, uh, you know about where they are, when they observe that right in real time. Um, and uh, uh, during, for this is a rather old one, there were 5530 tweets per second related to Japan earthquake and tsunami, right. And um, during Super Bowl, there were 17000 tweets per second, right. And this is, this is Super Bowl 2012. So, the numbers have continue to grow uh, go up right that tells you the velocity right I, I think there is hard to come up with a better um, indication better um, example of velocity than this number there's no way for humans to keep up with this kind of data uh, during um, um, the 
terrorism event in Mumbai in 2008, when I was watching that event, the amount of tweets were so many that I could not keep up with that. And I'm talking about 2008, right? That's the kind of first year of Twitter's full operation. And uh, you know, you can't search and find things of interest. And so, there needs to be computational, um, uh, you know, processes to find what is of interest to a consumer of data. Um, and basically, you have a broad variety of uh, you know social data that goes on, and uh, we have a system called Twitteris uh, that helps you analyze um, many of this data. It started with Twitter data. Uh, we are adding Instagram now, uh, and Instagram has more than uh, in, uh, more users than Twitter has now. Um, we can add uh, public for you know Facebook post, um, and, and we can get other sources of data also. We have an API that will allow you to basically incorporate any particular kind of data uh, into the system that that is relevant for it. Now, um, the you know think about the data that we have talked about so far that uh, Emmanuel uh, talked about the table that he showed uh, and such and, um, and, and think about the data that let us say sensor creates. Right? That data is far more well behaving and well structured. And even then, there are so many challenges that, that, that Emmanuel and Ricardo uh, mentioned, right? Um, but the social data and the textual data is particularly more challenging. In fact, a lot more challenging uh, because uh, it uh, actually embodies the complexity of human language, right? Our expressions, right? So, whatever you are sensing, whatever you are observing, it is being processed by your brain and your thought process and your belief system and your cultural biases and all those kind of stuff. And then all that nuances, all those nuances are captured in the tweets you come up with, right? So, so it, it makes for a very challenging thing. Again, there is, <laughs> that is yes. <laughs> okay. So, let us let us talk about it. Let us dwell on this uh, this slide. It's a very important uh, slide. I'm very proud of the, this particular slide. Um, there is temporal, spatial, and thematic component, right? In that, um, in Mumbai attack, uh, the terrorists struck nine different places, right? So there are spaces, locations, and spatial would be as simple as a coordinate that a machine generates. So, you use a so mobile phone to capture um, uh, a photograph and post it on uh, you know uh, online on social media Flickr or uh, you know anything else or uh, you put it in um, you know Twitter that gives you location. But uh, what if either location is here I get coordinate, but I am able to convert that as in front of Joshi Research Center. Won't it be a lot more meaningful? Right? So, um, when we when I talk about spatial thing, for example, location thing, it is not just about um, uh, location as in GPS coordinates or coordinate system, which machines can generate, but it would be also location that is of uh, value and of use to human interest and human decision making. Right, and in the context of social media, there are um, there is a broad variety of location that we can talk about. So GPS location embedded is the most precise uh, um, type, and yet um, uh, few num few tweets have that. Uh, in one study, uh, uh, four percent of all the tweets were found to have location information. Now, this will vary if the content is uh, on the topic that is uh, inherently created more by mobile phones, more of that content would have GPS location versus the content that is more in, in inherently created by desktops uh, that will you know would not have that right that is one thing. Then uh, there will be location as given by the profile information of the person posting the location. Right? So, for example, uh, you know, person, I, I tweet something, uh, I uh, then and I tweet something about election. Then um, it is fair to say that I am from Dayton, 
which and perhaps my um, uh, you know profile information says I am from Dayton and that my vote is most relevant to the constituency, constituency in which Dayton belongs to right. So, uh, I could depending upon the <coughs> problem we are addressing. Now, suppose I am tweeting about um, uh, you know the earthquake that occurred in Nepal and you can reasonably decide that I am not in Nepal at that point of time. The fact that I am in Nepal uh, that, that I am in Dayton does not help you know has a different connotation that I am you know talking about it something remotely. I am not a, a an eyewitness, I am not reporting online. So, it is also very nuanced that I can uh, you know um, uh, tell you about the location of the poster in some cases when the poster has said so, but when to use it itself is a not a, is not a, a, a you know uh, it is not a trivial problem. And suppose I am from New York and I say I am from Big Apple. Again understanding the Big Apple is New York, New York is not something that is totally trivial right. So, that is another uh, challenge that you can talk about or another uh, you know nuance and challenge that you can talk about. Let us talk about one other interesting issue that um, uh, I say in my content uh, some uh, location or a, uh, a geographical entity, entity that has uh, you know well known geographical uh, 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 feature uh, and so then I can identify that entity. And then, so for example, I can identify the stadium where the Super Bowl is play, played. So I know that I'm talking about that location, right? And uh, based on the content analysis of the tweet. And yet another one is the f I only talked about three versions of locations, right? Yet the fourth one is where um, no locations we mentioned, but I algorithmically predict where you are from. So, profile does not say, but I can predict where I am from. So, uh, one of a uh, couple of our students uh, did um, uh, you know develop an algorithm uh, and uh, some others had tried before, but these, these guys came up with um, um, uh, a, a unsupervised method rather than supervised uh, machine learning method and uh, learning method. And then uh, they basically would analyze all the tweets from a person and they had hypothesis that a person is likely to tweet from uh, a lot uh, uh, tweet about uh, uh, entities of interest that are geographically nearby. So, basically what they would do is say I uh, suppose I am from San Francisco and you analyze the algorithm analyze 1000 tweets and find all the entities and they would find that majority of the entities um, that I talk about or the entity uh, location of the entities that I talk about most belong to San Francisco area. And how do I know that this entity is in San Francisco? Well, they use the Wikipedia as a knowledge base because when we on Wikipedia uh, page on San Francisco, variety of uh, locations uh, like uh, Golden Bay Bridge or you know number of other uh, uh, landmarks and other things, uh, teams. One of the very important things Americans uh, particularly like to talk about sports, um, sports, movie, entertainment. These are some very important uh, topics of conversations. So they will often talk about their home team. So, I will say you know if I say Browns and I understand clear, you know you know Brown is a you know in talking football context and this is a team from this location I um, you know imp I, I give uh, I, I tr you know it adds to my belief that you are from uh, you know that city or surrounding city. So, in that case they are able to predict um, um, in, in well over 50 in about 15 uh, 50 percent of the cases. Uh, a location that was um, within 100 uh, mile a radius with reasonably high prediction right. So, I have three qualifiers it is a prediction not it is accurate to certain level 70 high 70 percentage accuracy and uh, that uh, you know uh, it has this hypothesis, but they validated with the ground truth that they had and they were able to do that. Now, the thing is that that is the least precise form of prediction, but I have that available for largest percentage of cases right. So, you have this whole variety just on single to topic of space or location you can understand what how many challenges there are and how many nuances there are how many options there are. Yes. So, uh, so, there are allowed to be exceptions about three system one user 
that they already know the location and then cross checking. In terms uh, of validation? In terms of validation, they had a uh, you know data set uh, uh, that uh, yeah they, they, they knew the uh, location of the user just for evaluation purpose yeah. Okay, uh, then uh, in time is the easier part right? There's not that much of a challenge. Of course, there are normal challenges that this belongs to the last week or um, you know the last week keeps on moving because it depends on when you ask the question. Those kind of stuff there are with the time. Um, and then thematic context, so um, which is like what are the topics that they talk about. The second is called people content network, people content network. So people is about use of the profile information or demographic, de demographic information. Oh, I forgot one more uh, interesting way uh, to talk about uh, location uh, in a very approximate way would be use of linguistic. Language features can help you analyze where you might be from in a very broad level, right? But that can be still, it all depends on the application of, you know, that you are, that you are interested in. Sometimes we have a project um, that basically studies um, uh, uh, the epidemiology related to use of cannabis and synthetic cannabinoids. So, marijuana and panuana concentrates. And we are studying how does the uh, state law impact the decision, uh, you know, uh, usage of these substances. So some states don't allow marijuana at all. Others allow for medical use. Other allow for recreational use, and some allow for both. And then you might have a question: If a marijuana is legalized, does that lead to higher use of marijuana concentrates? Right? Because and, 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 and synthetic, um, you know, marijuana or cannabis. Uh, 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 in that case, you know, those are very, um, those have worse side effect than, uh, you know, the, the natural substance. And you want to understand whether this is actually a bad thing in, for a society or no, it does not because people have a choice now. So they don't go for bad stuff. Which is it? Right? That's a very legitimate question. And because this is a um, thing with, you know, where the, you know, laws are state level laws, my analysis is primarily at the state level within which I may be uh, interested in further analyzing at the metro or rural area. But now you can see that I can use a lot more of the location information. You know, if I can you know, predict that the, uh, you know, this is, is from, uh, you know, uh, Dayton area uh, or, or Cincinnati area, I know that that's in Ohio, right? And that helps you uh, uh, answer your questions. Uh, the other aspect of people may be that um, you say you want to know what is the profession of the person. For example, is this from I think it's just I mentioned is this is this tweet from journalist, and I may give higher credence to something that is coming from journalist, or that you are talking about disaster scenario, and the tweet is from public official. Then again, I'll give higher uh, credence to um, that uh, tweet uh, than uh, or from utility like say your electric utility which could go down during a disaster. Again, I will give higher uh, credence to that versus something that is being reported by Jodo, right. So, um, there are these issues about you know the things uh, knowledge about people and who, who is uh, uh, putting out the social media, who is putting out the social ob the observation during the citizen sensing that is uh, interesting. Content uh, also similar to the thematic saying what is it about, what does it say. And I'll tell you a couple of issues of content shortly, uh, and come back to that. And network, and there are many issues of network. So uh, my colleague Derek Don, uh, for example, studies network science, and uh, earlier Hemant Purohit and my team uh, used to study network science, who is now a uh, assistant uh, professor at GMU. And uh, you can say how the information is diffused, how uh, who is um, who is more influential person in this community, right? Uh, who is, uh, so, so there are many, many issues about um, uh, the network. I will show you a couple of slides later, uh, later on uh, that are very important in understanding how the messages flow and um, who influences whom and uh, who spreads the correct thing, who spreads the rumor, all these kind of questions you may want to ask. Um, uh, uh, who is interested in what kind of information? Right? Does um, news travel faster than some other type of content? All these kind of questions you may want to ask. 
uh, and some of them require network thing, others require a combination of these people contain network kind of stuff, right? Is it a, um, uh, how does the information flow about a very local event versus a global event? There are two questions I can ask. Then I would ask this uh, very interesting, uh, uh, you know, thing about sentiment, emotion, and intent. So there are a lot of issues, for example, where um, uh, businesses or uh, other users uh, are interested in understanding the sentiment, emotions, and uh, intent. For example, um, for election, or uh, for example, movie, a movie preview has been posted, and then people are talking about that movie preview online. It has been shown that analysis uh, of this kind of content have led to very high quality prediction. And the movie studios would know ahead of the time what does it look like and based on that they may dynamically decide whether to put more money in marketing or not, right? Very important, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in let's say that particular application of movie uh, making and movie production, uh, very often marketing has a bigger budget than the movie production itself, right? So it depends on, you know, and so in this case, all the decisions you make in terms of hiring the right star and editing and production and scripting and everything vis-a-vis -vis, uh, you know, the decision that you make, you have to make in a few days. And this is a very good example of again velocity, that those decisions have to be made very fast. You have only four, five, six days to this release and you must make the decisions, uh, you know, uh, every day, every hour to decide how to, you know, target the users and whether you want to put it in a banners and whether you do targeted advertisement and for this demographic or that demographic, right? So, uh, uh, so, so sentiment, for example, plays very important uh, uh, role. Emotion is something that has uh, been underutilized because until recently there wasn't much technical work on emotion. Again, Van Bo Wang, uh, another student of mine, his thesis uh, was on emotion. And so there is now extensive work on understanding emotions and I will show you examples of the emotion. And finally, intent. Again, very important thing. For example, um, I yesterday I was I think telling, right, whether somebody is interested in buying that or somebody is interested in uh, is just giving an opinion. If somebody is giving an opinion and you can just judge that um, uh, the person already has that, uh, you know, widget, why would you advertise that widget for that person, right? So, uh, the intent can be very important things. And by and large, for commercial applications, sentiment, emotion, uh, intent are extremely important aspects of the things. And then you can go even more uh, challenging things like behavior, social and cultural. Uh, the network, by the way, has things like influence, diffusion, engagement, this kind of stuff. I will show you some examples of that as we go along. So let us look at um, just a couple of technical problems, a couple of more uh, technical problems. I already kind of described some of them uh, and had did hand waving. So one of the biggest challenge with social media is that um, it is an informal text, right? So. Um, um, uh, it is a, so you can look at here a uh, few of the descriptions here. Um, I have um, uh, in the top here a user generated content on Twitter during 2009 Iran elections. And you have unmediated interpersonal communication that uses informal English. Uh, here uh, user generated music artist pages on MySpace. Uh, context is implicit that interaction between like minded people in this case. So, in my, uh, my space which is no more, but it used to have, you know, um, different sections and people will talk about, you know, the, you know so there will be music thing and within the music there will be particular artists and people interested in that artist will talk about, you know, that artist, right? So, but you can look at, you know, you do not, you doing it up for real, I really love the album. How do you understand it? What, what, what does it mean? What is it trying to say, right? So, but because the interaction is between like-minded people, they have, every community has their own lingo. Drug abusers have their own lingo. Uh, music lovers have their own lingo, right? 
and disaster coordinators have their own lingo. So, there are very interesting things. So, for example, again one research was about creating a set of domain specific terms on the automatically. So, given a, a corpus of uh, you know let us say tweet or social media content that relates to a particular type of event, it will automatically, automatically create uh, uh, high value terms for then humans to curate so that you can use then that terms to further understand the social content right. Then you have variations and creativity in expressions uh, uh, and the, the properties of medium like uh, uh, retweet is a vote of confidence of you know uh, of a sort right, reply is engagement right. Um, so, that is those are properties, but they are different for space you know Facebook versus um, uh, you know uh, Twitter and other media and one solution really fits all social media right. So, there are number of challenges there. So, there was this survey this is a rather old survey, but uh, the type of content you can see on uh, uh, you know left hand side there are type of different types of content and then on the right hand side there is this uh, formality score. So, broadcast news for example, the content is more formal, formal um, you know it may not be as formal as a uh, literature uh, you know scientific literature, but fairly formal. A blog is little less formal, scripts, scripted speech is little less formal because it is you know it is verbal aspects of it. So, I can be little less formal than the written text, email is less you know and so on so forth and you can see the twitter is even more formal, Facebook is further uh, informal and so on and so forth and this this has kept on changing by the way. So, if I do the same study today I will get little difference, but the point here is that there is a different level of informality in the social media content which is what leads to lot of challenges. So, here are some example the one key challenge thing is name entity uh, recognition is this is this talking about uh, person, location, event things of that nature right and uh, uh, you know it is a name entity. So, album name, um, uh, uh, I loved your music yesterday and in this happen in this case it so happens that the uh, poster means yesterday is a uh, is the album ok. How do you understand that? Um, here in the other case uh, uh, it was the hangover of the year lasted forever. Now, it so happens that hangover is a movie, the hangover is a movie, but here the person is not talking about the movie. So, how do you know this you know uh, no, it is not the movie in this particular case, it is a cultural expression, it is a common expression. So, I went to the movies bad choice picking G I Joe worse now, in this case G I Joe is a movie, it could be something not, not a movie also in other context. Uh, uh, here. Uh, to give you an example, particularly one type of name entity, uh, uh, name, name entities are cultural entities, right? And so they come in different flavors. So one flavor, let's see, is in the sense. And I, I have this example from the movie domain that there are three thousand six hundred songs with yesterday in the title. So what if I could figure out that yesterday in the tweet? or social media content is actually uh, the uh, song uh, song name is song title. Now, which of the 3600 it is right because you do not understand that then it is really not meaningful then you cannot tell who is the artist then you cannot tell what is the genre right? all those things you would like to know right. Uh, there are um, uh, 195 releases of American Pie and artists covering American Pie there are 31 of them. Right, bands with song Merry Christmas. The sixty bands with song Merry Christmas. Right, so this shows you the challenge in understanding social media context, particularly understanding the sense in this case. Second is multiple senses in different domains for the same movie uh, entities. For example, uh, Twilight uh, is a uh, you know could be a novel, uh, is a film, short story, album, plays, uh, comic, poem time of the day transformers can be any of the other things. The dark knight could be a name for the comic superhero hero in batman film or could be a soundtrack of the batman of that movie or could be video game 
right? And a thin co roller coaster ride. What is it? So, uh, you know, in the uh, context, for example, of celebration, here are just a very specific example celebration song or song by Cool and the Gang, notably covered by Kylie um, Minogue. Um, celebrations, voices with soul song, and so on and so forth. You can see how many different possible senses, um, you know, that this particular uh, music, uh, uh, you know, in the music theme domain itself, how many senses there could be, right? So, clearly, I can't cover this, uh, you know, all the details in in, in this uh, time I have, uh, but you know, we have worked on this. In fact, this work. Uh, uh, was uh, outgrowth of my student Mina Nagarajan working at IBM, uh, where then IBM ended de uh, developing a commercial um, uh, service called Sound Index for BBC, uh, and it was you know deployed on BBC News um, because uh, BBC wanted to uh, figure out um, what are 18 year old in London listening to now, right? And um, this study, one of the you know, associated work here uh, uh, was evaluated against the billboard charts. So, uh, billboard chart is a um, traditional method for uh, deciding the uh, popularity of uh, album or music. Uh, and um, you know, the top 40 or top, top 20 and you know, remember in uh, you, some of you might be aware of KCK some 40. Uh, 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 I guess well, old timers <laughs> may decide from here. And in the Sri Lanka, from 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 in India, there was this uh, also top uh, music show kind of thing. Uh, at least in our days, there was a very popular one. Now it is you know so diffused. Now, anyway, uh, so uh, but but there are a lot of important business decisions that get made with with this kind of knowledge, right? So um, uh, the uh, the billboard is computed based on how many albums are sold and how many times uh, something is played on a radio. But most teenagers who are heavy consumers of music and who is an important target domain, they do not buy albums anymore. They download it or they listen online. And uh, um, so, how do you capture? And they are more accurate, uh, you know, they are the right demographic whose consumption is what you need to record, not album sale. And they do not listen to radio, they listen online, right. So, um, the billboard uh, is giving the data that is outdated and um, you know based on really wrong demographics. So, we develop uh, the solution based on social media, because these guys may be listening very well, but they talk about it on social media. And by analyzing the social media, uh, we compared them and we found for example, that we could uh, detect the trend much earlier than uh, hangover and that our ranking that was in user surveys with teenagers and te uh, you know, tweens uh, was found to be much more accurate. They said, yeah, this is representative of what we have, right. So, so one strategy here was that, um, you know, I talked about these 60 sounds and 3600 things and all that. It so happens that there is a no, there is a knowledge base that has all these things. The, see, if I don't even have um, uh, something to underpin, if I don't even have knowledge that there are these sixty possible many Christmas uh, bands, or that so many you know uh, title you know, uh, titles, uh, and here is the album, and here is the artist or band which has uh, this uh, yesterday thing, how would I even start to solve this problem? So we said um, we will use an existing knowledge base which is very high quality and created by uh, people interested in music, it is called music brains. Right? So, music brains has 600,000 artists and people just like Wikipedia, all the music lovers they keep on maintaining it, it is a community effort, extremely uh, and the information is very high quality there. So, we leverage that to you know that knowledge to say well, what are the things can be. So, then once I can say this yesterday is used in the sense of a song, then I have to do this ambiguation which of the 60 song it is. So, then how do I do? I do variety of things. For example, in this uh, tweet, it says the new Merry Christmas tune so good. I have something called. So, now the question is which new Merry Christmas? 
so good is also a song. In this case, we decided so good is not a song, uh, is not used in the term of in, in the context of sound song. But Merry Christmas, we decided is indeed um, uh, you know a tune. And now question is which Merry, uh, Merry Christmas. So we now use <laughs> expert help needed. Okay. Now we need to figure out which Merry Christmas. So here are variety of objects in uh, music brains. Yeah, but they, uh, you know all those objects have properties like when was it released. Now if I understand new means recently released, then I can query and say give me a rank in ranked order uh, all the uh, you know uh, tunes uh, that uh, have merry that are about Merry Christmas that have Merry Christmas in the title. That's what you're looking for, right? And then. Uh, you are creating basically a graph with connections and the one that is closest or most connected to the things in your uh, entities that you recognize in your tweets is the one that you are uh, you know looking for right so this is how we uh, try to uh, come up with the likely candidate merry christmas that user has in mind right uh, not easy at all so uh, the other, you know, for example, we may you be able to use such things as uh, release your third album already. So in this case, uh, I'm able to exploit career restrictions, meaning, um, you know, uh, we are, we know uh, that Merry Christmas is played by the new Merry Christmas is played by let's say these three four top possibilities. Then you say. Who has um, uh, you know uh, third album? Uh, meaning, uh, who is new in career? So uh, the first one, let's say, is by an old, very old timer. So we think that that's not the one. Second one is uh, you know a pretty young artist and just recently started to record, and this is his third release. I think that this is that's much better. Uh, that's a much better choice than the first one. Right? A recent album decision. I loved your new album. Now it tells me it's a new album, so I can, you know. So you have to support. You know, you, maybe you can't rely on just one that tweet, but you have to look at some tweets earlier than that or be after that. Age restriction. Happy twenty fifth, Rihanna. Now I understand. Uh, you know the twenty. You know I, because I. You know all that music prints tells you age of the artist. It tells you genre of the artist. It tells you all the albums that artist has released. All the tunes that it is right, so I can exploit all of them to get the information. Let me change the topic to tell you, give you a sense of how hard another challenge is, which is the um, uh, social uh, to understand of sentiment. So uh, this one is what we call target-specific opinion identification and classification of tweet unsupervised, and it's a unsupervised approach. So this is uh, just a slide from based on a paper that we had. So you look at here. Um, I loved King's speech, funny moving, Colin Firth is so amazing, blah, 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 right. But the interesting thing is that now two name entities, right, King's speech and Colin Firth and there are two different sentiments, different ones on each of the entities. By and large uh, simple sen sentiment analysis work will simply look for sentiment expression words positive sentiment words, negative sentiment words and based on that give you say this positive sentiment, negative sentiment. But when you have multiple of these, how can you identify, you know. So you need to understand what is the target for this, uh, you know, uh, orange uh, term with respect to the name entity in dark uh, blue, right. And uh, here are, you know, there's just some example which are very hard to. Um, do. So here it says the opinion cues may not be towards the given target. Opinion cues are domain and context dependent. So was the King's speech free, uh, 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 free movie stream online? In this case, uh, free is not opinion uh, 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 in the movie domain, but free is it uh, is is sort of you know giving out free. Free can be a good, can be bad depending on the context, right? Uh, you are giving away material for free, maybe it is lower quality, you are you know, so, so it depends on what context people are talking about it. Um, uh, and, 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 and so there is again 
what all I am trying to here say is that there is lot more that goes in here you have um, uh, you know for king speech you have to understand there is loud here there is this funny movie here and all of them are characterized this amazing is actually saying that it is a very positive endorsement for uh, Colin Firth and things of that nature. This makes uh, these are some of the examples why um, uh, you know this is a very challenging problem to solve. Now, I come to a very interesting problem uh, related to um, uh, uh, velocity. I do not think there can be a better velocity problem than uh, example than this. So, pay attention. This is 5 45 pm November 6. Remember that day? Um, John probably remembers that. November 6, 2012. Election day. Right? The day election is uh, being uh, you know contested, you know, actually people are voting that day. And how uh, and uh, what can be a better velocity problem than predicting how the election will go? To give you the context, by the way, in 2012, and I see half of the audience was not here in 2012 in US, uh, people, you know, the media thought that this will be a toss up election or this is a very closely fought election. That is what they thought. With one exception, uh, 538.com, there was one exception, uh, Nate Silver. Other than that, everybody uh, said this is a very closely called election. They would say, oh, um, this you can't call, the election won't be called this, this night, uh, it will be you know, but tomorrow maybe sometime we will call the election. Or they say, well, what happens if there is an electoral tie? This is something unique of el American election, uh, you know, uh, system, ele electoral system, which is based on the electoral votes that each of the states have. And then uh, there are in certain circumstances, both party can have exactly the same votes and then a certain method for breaking the tie. But anyway, they are talking about all those things in the expectations in the, and the polls so showed also very close election. Now, I was able to, in my case, I, you can see, you look at the text here, uh, I hesitate to predict. Usually, Obama has lot more traffic, although we discounted for that. So, I am saying that just because there is more traffic does not mean he is more, you know, just because he is more popular does not mean that he is going to win or not win. We discount for that, we have methods to take care of that. During past few hours, there is a crossover in the election 2012 hashtag, which is, so I am saying, I am talking about that, sentiment on social media at each of the swing states. There were 10 swing states, states that, uh, states that were identified where opinion polls could not tell who will win, right. I checked Florida, Virginia, Ohio, Colorado, these are all that and I said check for yourself, I am giving the link to our own, uh, you know, live monitoring dashboard for the election, which is this snapshot is from that. If this holds, we are wrapping up the results by 11 pm. 11 pm is the first time that you can predict the election. So, this is a very bold prediction and in reality the election was called precisely at 11 20, yeah. right. So, this shows the power. I think we should have gotten a lot more credit than we have gotten for that if I look <laughs> back to that, right. If, if we, if I was writing this from IBM, the, we will, will go gaga over it, right. <laughs> oh, if some researcher said something there. You know, I am not influential enough on social media, so this is all I get. But you, what this is what you see, see this is the real time monitoring of sentiment. So, this is real time, right? Every hour, every moment this graph is being, uh, you know, repainted. And this is number 5 and this is number 6. Another interesting thing here is November 5, until number 5, people will say what they think, what they believe. They try to influence other people. On November 6, what they do? They say what they did, how they voted, right? So, very accurate thing. So, you have to really do it in a short time for actually what they are doing, not what they say they would do. And uh, they would probably, you know, they did not vote, they are probably not going to tweet about it. If they voted, then only they are going to tweet about it. So, it is a very accurate thing. And I saw Obama switch over, you can see 
on that. So people were talking whatever they were talking, but this is the actual switch over. Here again, uh, this happened a little bit earlier, not the last day. Okay. Here again, just a little bit earlier than that. Here earlier, uh, at least one day here even earlier like that. And the Virginia was the closest. And in fact, Virginia was the last state to be called. Okay. So this shows you the power of um, uh, you know, social media monitoring in real time, right? real time monitoring of social media. Now there are a lot of interesting things we can do with it. For example, there are certain events that occur during uh, this whole larger event of uh, election 2012. So the election is presidential debate, for example. This is a very important debate. Uh, you know, events where hope is expectation is that the public public opinion can change depending upon how uh, you know the candidates perform in that duel, right, or in that that, that contest um, debate. And uh, there'll be some open mind pe minded people. You know, 80 percent of voters have already made up their mind, but there are 10, 20 percent that have not yet decided. That's what, these are the people who decide the elections. And that, um, uh, so it is very important to understand what happens at each of them. So, in the first debate, Obama decidedly do very poorly. That was understood. And we indeed, so you can see, this is, for, we are tracking for Obama in this case. And you can see that uh, at the, in the, you know, his sentiment went down significantly, precipitously. And then, red color, then we, we are also able to say, what are the influencing, influencing factor automatically? So we can analyze the content here to um, uh, support, uh, you know, so, so the last night and all that are not meaningful, but you know, uh, uh, so, uh, there is this big bird. And big bird was a uh, negative for Romney and positive for Obama. Okay. So uh, it's actually green that does not show. Up. No, it's, it's actually here red. I don't know why, but but um, uh, something happened with Big Bird, and uh, largely for Obama it was considered to be uh, uh, red. Now you can see now for any one of them, then you can say why which tweets are indicative of what you know those things are. So you can see what are the important themes that contributed to the change, and what are the specific data that supports that you know, uh, uh, thing being counted for or against uh, that particular candidate. By the way, I'm looking for one student to uh, add this feature to the current version of Twitteris, which is kind of, you know, uh, missing. So any one of you who wants to do that, let me know. Um, it's a very interesting project. Um, uh, okay. Here is uh, the uh, second debate where Obama did better. And there are more greens uh, for Obama than, you know, or important greens than, uh, so last night debate is in green. Obama, you know, all the conversation about last night debate in the context of Obama were positive for Obama, right? And, um, you know, there are other things like Candy Crawley was not viewed very positively and things of that nature. But Obama talked about equal pay, you know, for, you know, women. And that was seen very positively. So you can see that is in green. Right? So, um, so what happened here behind, so you can say smart data is about analysis for reasoning behind the real world actions, Democrats win. Now here is a network tab and here um, uh, in this case, who are the influential posters that talk about Bar Barack Obama or actually who are the most frequent posters and then this is a graph of how they are connected to each other. So this graph shows top 100 influential users that talk, uh, you know, users that talk about o Barack Obama and uh, you know, it says who are the positive influencer, who are the negative influencer. So the idea would be that this could lead to you for you to understand uh, who you want to engage with. So in fact, this is what happened during um, 2014 election in India. Um, uh, uh, th then candidate uh, Narendra Modi, uh, Modi's technical team had engaged us. And uh, um, I, 
agreed to participate because uh, you know I, I certainly wanted to be a political, but yet um, it's a an opportunity for us to do the things in real world. Um, so they asked us to analyze various various things. Among the things they wanted to know is who are the people following Narendra Modi. I mean, there are a lot of people following Narendra Modi and not yet following the BJP. So they want, you know, the, they want to target those people to also follow uh, BJP. So that's what they wanted to know. Then, secondly, they wanted to know who are the people, influential people, who have positive opinion about BJP and Modi on social media, with the intention of engaging them for vol as volunteers, because election also has a big ground game issue. You know, so here virtual world. And cyber space and real world, they they collide. They they you know so that's very important, right? Obviously, you do all the advertisement because uh, so that people buy, so they actually pay for something, right? Buy product, so physical thing. And and so uh, that kind of this kind of analysis can uh, ha give you that indication, so you know the top targets that you would have. Another very important example is that um, um, uh, let's say uh, Modi ji was Narendra Modi was going to go to a particular state and particular area to give election rally. Who are the influential people uh, that are inclined for towards him that they can target to spread the news through electronic media? Narendra Modi is a masterful user of you know uh, 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 social media. Probably there is nobody else. Uh, as uh, th no other politicians that I know of uh, uh, that that has used social media uh, more effectively than Modi, uh, you know, Narendra Modi has. So, so, so that these are the kind of things you can do. So you can see, uh, you know, uh, here uh, I show the graph uh, before election one for Obama and Romney, and uh, basically the cohesive and well connected graph means better, very broadly speaking. So see, after after um, debate one, Romney became you know uh, you know graph shows very positive thing. Then there is something like somewhat similar, and then after the Hurricane Sandy, where Obama did great job, masterful job, you saw this frayed, and this one became better, further improved, right? So this is another indication that gives us um, you know. Um, uh, view that maybe we are doing things right. So you have to look at many perspectives. Just sentiment alone would not be sufficient. Right? Now you can show analysis by location. So for example, I can say in that particular state in use of marijuana, let me see what is happening. I am doing crime monitoring. I want to say what is happening in that particular location, that kind of stuff. I uh, one wonderful uh, you know example use of this was uh, the day Barack Obama won Nobel Prize, and uh, we looked at the uh, tweets uh, related to that uh, incident or event uh, from let's say um, New York or um, uh, or uh, you know Massachusetts or other so-called blue democratic state versus uh, from um, red state of uh, Louisiana and. Uh, uh, and Nevada and uh, you know uh, Arizona and others, which were very different kind of things. So, for example, uh, you know I think there was a use of word "soylent green" um, in the context. Well, no, that was in context of election. Um, anyway, but the point is that for the same thing, people's perception were so different, and you can immediately monitor that. Uh, I can give you another example uh, in a defense case, whereby. Uh, we, uh, you know, U.S. used drones to um, uh, kill a lot of people on the ground, and now um, the issue is that um, let's say you want to understand uh, what do people in Pakistan, different parts of Pakistan, tell about, you know, say about drone strike, right? Is it actually, you know, let's say a drone strike actually killed uh, a number of terrorists? But what do people on the ground say? Do they like that or they don't like that? It's an important aspect that you need to understand for military decision making, right? And so this is example of the things that you may want to do and you can do with this thing. You can find out, uh, you know, images, uh, you know, and uh, stuff. Let me again give one other excellent example of uh, velocity here. 
uh, because uh, the, the example of disaster management is extremely appropriate or, or, or relevant to um, uh, uh, you know velocity issue challenge. So, um, you know people want to have when there is a disaster people want to help uh, and uh, you need ti timely delivery of the right resource uh, and information to the right people at the right location right and that is a coordination thing. How do you know? How do you do that? So, here is the Twitter snapshot where it tells you for example, where I it can automatically classify the tweets based on the type of uh, based on the topic. So, food need, medical need, resource need, shelter need right. Here you can see the user attributions right, journalist, humanitarian, activism, academic, blogger, business person, technical person, medical person right and um, uh, if it was a different kind of um, uh, you know uh, campaign we call this a campaign then I would have different um, you know uh, uh, roles user roles that uh, that would be of interest to me right that there the humanitarian role may not be for in for an election humanitarian role is not very important right. So, I will have contextually relevant roles to be uh, captured and then here you can see uh, you know uh, 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 victims of hurricane sandy and uh, things that are showing up in terms of uh, and then you can browse by location and what people are talking about in some part people are talking about election, electricity is, is shut down other part uh, there is water logging and water you know flood water coming in. So, you can see monitor by locations and such. So, uh, in the context of Oklahoma tornado um, FEMA you know the major in, in thing asked ask uh, 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 how to uh, you know the information on social media about um, gas leak related data. And so, we were able to immediately go back to them and say mining the data uh, you know we can we, we found the information on social media that all the uh, leaks in the Moore county were capped and stopped by 1130 in the night and we pass that information back to them. And then you, you may also engage the author about the veracity of information and confirm that. So, there is this one more we we did not talk about in this tutorial the veracity part, but uh, and we have long tutorial that my colleague Dr. Prasad gives uh, uh, on veracity issue, issue. So, the lot of tweets on how to and where to assist and that also you can me measure. So, let us look at this another very interesting example. If possible, you want to use social media to uh, uh, to connect people with the need, with people with the ability and desire to uh, help uh, address those needs. But let me show you the challenge of the problem. Only 1.3 percent of the tweets were uh, identified as um, uh, uh, you know request for help on that particular topic but only 0 0.02 percent that is 2 in 10,000 I believe as a precise resource donation offer to help. So, it is truly a needle in the haystack right and of these only very few will match the actual thing by time and location. This person is willing to help something donate blood, but the blood is needed in a remote area. So, it is not going to help that right. So, to match this request with this offer is a very challenging problem, but very important problem if you can do that is very good right. So, oh. so this show, there is a paper on in first Monday uh, uh, in influential on, online journal and say yes, say, where do I go to help out for other volunteer work around Moore? Anyone know? Moore, Moore is the location information. And here, if you would like to volunteer today, help is desperately needed in Shawnee. Shawnee is in Moore. Call this. This is very challenging that you need to know Shawnee is in Moore. Now, here is an example. This is an example where you can. I bet you cannot solve uh, in any reasonable way without additional knowledge base. 
without, without any semantics. How are you going to construct in this set of data, noisy data that Sean is in Moore? And that piece, this person is offering Moore, so there is a match. Right? So background knowledge is extremely critical and critical aspect of semantics. And item number one, two, three of semantics, one. That's without that you can't do this kind of stuff. Right? And so on, there are many examples of that kind. This one on the fly, in real time, as the thing occurs, you can see the system automatically classifies tweets as medical emergency uh, responders. Uh, food, volunteer, weather, shelter, power, donation, clothes, traffic and whatever. So, whatever people are uh, you know uh, users want we can class you know create the topic hierarchy and we can uh, there are various ways we do it. Uh, we can do it by keywords uh, and variety of other statistical and uh, uh, IR techniques or we can train classifiers and there is a technique called active learning. So, where people can participate in um, uh, to train a classifier on the fly right um, and and so um, variety of techniques can come into picture now you can see you know tweets classified by type so here is a grace life church is open for anyone needing food clothing uh, 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 and shelter and then there is an address right so you identify that very in, you know it's very important somebody wants shelter or so you want to help somebody to get a shelter Right here you can find where is the shelter nearby, right. Here uh, you know during the disaster it says who are the influencers to engage with. So for example, uh, during a mudslide local community, per, per, uh, local, local person simply emerges as a community leader. People there is no predefined role but people simply take over the role. You want to find that person and reach out to that person, ask him what do you need. And, and arrange help for them. This is a crisis map uh, created by Google during Cyclone Fallon. And there is a um, uh, uh, thing, let me open it up. And here it says, thanks to Noesis for the data. Uh, so, I think the one in the, um, let us see, I do not know if it is still there. Is it going to show? I launched, I launched uh, uh, that link. In, in, huh? Oh, okay. It does not does oh. show anything there. That is okay. So, uh, during Uttarakhand, uh, you know, um, and um, no, that is Uttarakhand, okay. So, this one shows, um, yeah, just go down. Oh, yeah. it's a bit yeah. slow. Oh, that is slow? Hmm. Okay. Okay, let us go back then. So, it talks about uh, you know uh, Noesis is uh, contribution to that crisis uh, in that uh, thing. Okay, where is this? Oh, there it is. Okay, okay so that is a uh, thing. Here is the snapshot of Twitter's uh, platform uh, simulation tool. So, uh, we had um, may all the agencies uh, in the Dayton area came together police and fire department and city authorities and utilities and uh, you know, law, you know, all kinds of stuff. They came together and they did a simulation trial for um, uh, uh, you know an emergency where there were potential. You know, there were basically a uh, couple of dirty bombs that went off, and then there was. This was focusing on medical situation after that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, we took uh, Boston bombing um, uh, uh, tweets uh, and then repurposed it for uh, you know running this. Uh, exercise and so there is very good uh, training and exercise and planning. Now, this is the thing in the real world. So, during uh, Uttarakhand fund uh, sorry during Jammu and Kashmir um, uh, floods last year, uh, uh, Hemant Purohit um, uh, uh, 
initiated an effort uh, and uh, there were six digital um, co six coordinators, uh, one in Singapore, him being here and four in India and they brought together hundreds of uh, digital volunteers. And then we, you know, th this has to happen more or less in real time. And then they gave uh, this tool from, this is a component of Twitties. Twitties, Twitties is very complex and I will show you uh, the next thing is Twitties. But that is very complex. So, we have to keep, make a very targeted uh, tool. So, here on the, uh, because it, it needs to be very user friendly, very usable and solve one problem well rather than all kinds of other things. So, on the left hand side you see needs to rescue. So, high quality identification for tweets that are explicitly asking for uh, thing, uh, uh, you know this person says exactly where uh, a particular you know saying uh, opposite hotel Kashmir palace help right and uh, you know and uh, please help getting any info to him. So, people are trying to reach or uh, you know here it says uh, no college blah, blah whatever. Now, from that people picks up uh, you know digital volunteers uh, would uh, verify the ones that really need more help. So, it not it cannot be done entirely automatically uh, that will be foolish to do that uh, because you are uh, uh, because you are going to send actual army uh, you know party to send and rescue them. So, they will verify and, and make sure the information is there and then they will send it to army uh, you know rescue uh, team. And then army would actually send the team and we will monitor the actual rescue and evacuation that occurred, right. And so, this really uh, actually helped um, uh, you know in the, in the number of uh, articles written on this uh, uh, in media. So, that really helped uh, people um, um, understand. Now, now um, let me talk about one topic and then I will give you a short demo. Um, so, now moving even more advanced all the things and what I talked about is pretty advanced, but this is something uh, that uh, we had we kind of we did not really make it commercial grade, but we had proof of concept of this. So, we have uh, tomorrow uh, you know Pawan will talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, streaming media processing of text, but here during um, uh, the Egypt revolution I believe it is January 29. 2011, I think that is the date if I remember correctly. Uh, and that on that day, uh, what was happening is that um, uh, people were organizing million person march from Tahir Square to uh, a place, uh, uh, you know, where uh, uh, where uh, the um, uh, Mubarak, Mubarak, President Mubarak was then President Mubarak was. Uh, you know high, uh, held up or, or where, where he was uh, you know basically he had moved to. So, um, what we are doing here is that we are analyzing the tweets and through the name entity recognition we are identifying all of these uh, you know names uh, entities. Remember I mentioned the example of that uh, 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 San, San, San Francisco thing for the location identification See, the, for the same kind of stuff. I, before I can do that, here are the things Cairo suburbs, protests, uh, Man March, um, Tahir Square, Hosni Mubarak, right, all this kind of stuff. These were identified. Then we give this to uh, a tool called Doozer, and then that will automatically create this domain model, right. Emmanuel, you might find this very interesting. Have you seen this before? Okay. So, so for example, uh, I, for example, sitting here, how would I understand what is Heliopolis? Right. But from uh, mining Wikipedia, I could tell Heliopolis is a suburb of Cairo. Now I can use this knowledge on the fly to improve my understanding of the social media content coming in. Right. So, uh, you know this is an example of various situation um, and uh, you know uh, topics that were extracted or entities that were extracted from those situations and um, um, uh, for them then you can you can see Iran election 2009, uh, Tehran university thing uh, and, and uh, you know uh, here is a model that was generated for um, Iran elections 
and you can see that Ahmadinejad and Musavi are politicians in Iran, and the system will tell you that. Uh, here, uh, uh, you know, the model is generated for, um, you know, where you so you know the Tehran University is a university in Tehran, in Iran. Uh, here, um, uh, uh, it says Azadi Square is a, s a city square in Tehran, right? 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 <laughs> Yeah, Iranians here. So, all right. So let us uh, look at the demo. Uh, how can we? Okay. Any questions while I get to the demo? Hmm. You talked of that uh, nodes, right? When it is well connected, then it is good sign. Uh, when talking of the election. I didn't understand when they are well connected, how it is. When they are well in the election context? Yeah, you show some uh, dots, right? Like when they are well connected, then that is a good sign. And for Romney, it's not well connected. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So, so basically, people are reinforcing, reinforcing each other's messages. Okay. And people are, um, uh, um, so, so I will give you a little background. Um, for example, when, um, if somebody goes for you know you know does election for, you know then they somebody a candidate candidate they will decide what theme they want to emphasize because they want to change the opinion of people they, if they, you talk about this is called technically they call it's called messaging that you have a consistent messaging and um, in media everything is a um, few second clip there's nothing longer than 30 second right so in a very short time you have to convey uh, to a TV viewer. Uh, what you are saying and you can't be giving complex idea you have to simplify it and you have to immediately get to the topic and convey to the user what it is so a good messaging means that people are you know if you do good messaging people are going to engage with each other and positively reinforce and hence the graph will be um, you know uh, uh, well connected and uh, they will uh, they will enforce each other thing by forwarding um, you know uh, and uh, by uh, you know retweeting by replying that kind of stuff and if the messaging is not good and candidates all over the place and it's not clear people are not clear on what is talking about then people less engage okay, so in that sense okay, kind of isolated. yeah so this is the twitter system uh, it's a, uh, the, a live system and uh, you can use it for many things. You can track any subject or brand by creating a campaign. Uh, and um, uh, here are just some of the things. So um, here is a um, video. Um, Do you need to voice the video? Mm -hmm. And uh, why is... Uh, Yeah, uh, but I, I don't see it here. It is there, but usually it's, it's, I don't see. It. Huh? Yeah, I'll give you sub. That's. The <laughs> that's why. Huh? Yeah, that's. But that's. Huh? It got removed for the URL change. What URL change? When, when did you mean? URL to the video. But we have had it for a long time. You mean suddenly it went away? Ah. Looks like Jeremy doesn't know for a long time. Okay. So, so uh, I th there are short videos and you will be able to go through this and um, do it yourself. I uh, will make sure that they start running as soon as possible. Let us go to the live campaign. So, just to give you the kind of campaigns that we can monitor, right? So this campaign here, you can see the type of campaigns you have. Violence, political, drug, disaster, brand, some other. Then you see Macy's campaign, which is for brand tracking, right? Or risk, corporate risk management. And so uh, Macy's uh, carry different uh, brand and they have promotion, let's say for a particular brand. Uh, and uh, uh, they want to see what how how what um, how well is your their brand campaign campaign doing and whether that translates into sales so they can monitor 
uh, you know, which campaign seems to be working, what the people are talking about it. If they have coupons that they have uh, given, they can say how many people are talking about the coupons and such. There is Narendra Modi uh, campaign that we had started long time ago, Hillary Clinton campaign we started, gender based violence campaign. So, this is a campaign, very substantial campaign and uh, in this campaign, this is happening real time. So, here you are seeing right now, this tweets and this is updated every 5 seconds right now, it can be changed. And so, you can see the tweets that are coming right now, these are the various things and these are uh, daily, uh, sorry, Im immediately done. So, uh, uh, Kesha Jenkins, I do not know what it is, I have I, not kept up with what is happening right now. Um, uh, Tanvi, do you know? Yeah, I think she is a transgender woman who was killed brutally. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you look at topics, under topics, you know, the big, larger ones. Top topics? Uh, oh. no, above that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the first one. Yeah. So, so now, uh, for example, this, this, these are all the top topics and on that and you know this guy says she has a name, Kisha Jenkins, a transgender woman was beaten by six men then shot to death this morning in Philly. Wow, I did not know that. So, uh, and you can study by day, by week, by month, any year. You then uh, you can uh, study by different categories. So, harmful practices, sexual violence, physical violence, right. So, for example, I think this probably will be also, um, you know, so there are different things. I do not know how it, why did not, why did that not get classified as sexual violence? Uh, did it, it probably got classified as, okay, it got classified as physical violence, but it is both. And so, you can see here in this case, Islamic State Muslim to non Muslim, oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and but you know you, you can see that there are different topics and they show up in that particular categories right you can see uh, things by positive sentiment negative sentiment and all kinds of stuff now this one in the red is um, i forgot now uh, there is uh, there's also this um, that's, the huh? that's, the that's the emotion but there is also uh, uh, oh uh, we also have classifiers that will automatically uh, tag uh, the things as such now, uh, what is, what are we doing with this for example? So, we uh, you know worked a little bit with United Nations and uh, we did a very uh, uh, we, a good sized uh, uh, study with several million tweets uh, and focusing on five countries, uh, Philippines, India, uh, Nigeria, uh, US and South Africa. And uh, then we kind of did a comparative analysis of these issues in gender violence. And um, you know the idea is to inform the policy makers. Uh, you know, so United Nations has a number of you know uh, campaigns, and uh, they would uh, help nations create policies to uh, handle this scourge, uh, handle this uh, bad you know problem of gender-based violence. And having uh, understanding that it is harmful, practi harmful practices, let's say um, that that is what uh, does that. For example, uh, dowry system, or for example, um, uh, honor killing. Right. So, knowing that and how much, uh, how uh, you can study with this, what are people, suppose there was an honor, honor killing in Pakistan, what are males saying, what are females saying, right. What are people of this class saying, other class. Some of them takes a lot more work than, you, you know, it cannot be done uh, out of the box, but it has a lot of features that can help you do deep analysis. So, this is not a simple sentiment analysis tool. You can of course, do sentiments on the things. So, let us go to a different campaign. You can see that we have a lot of campaigns here. Thus, NBC sees uh, election 2000. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So, here is our election that is you know uh, like 2012, we have election 2000 and you can see uh, in terms of topics, uh, you know Trump is really leading the conversations, but the interestingly Bernie Sanders is next, that is pretty interesting. And, uh, uh, and then you can study right, uh, what is happened you know uh, on any of these uh, different um, tags, uh, these are important uh, hashtags that are being done. 
uh, let's look at let's say sentiment here and you can see um, you know sentiment for um, Trump like that and you can see a uh, significant change in Jeb Bush's sentiment and then you can try and figure out why right now most tools do not allow you I, I do not know of in fact any tool that allows you to do that but this is very powerful so I can study all the tweets that contribute to that particular thing right and why Jeb Bush was uh, you know being talked about quite a bit on that day and what was the topic of conversation right and then uh, here uh, you know what did what happened why uh, you know uh, things really change for something so emotions right this is a very interesting thing here you will see that for example uh, Bernie uh, you know uh, no for Donald Trump uh, and uh, you know this is discussed but there is this um, anger so you will see uh, somewhere I saw Donald Trump uh, anger shows up quite a bit high let me see just let me pick here Donald Trump here Huh? On the right? Oh, here. Yeah. So I am looking at, oh, sorry, that I took it out. But yeah, these are Donald Trump and the yellow, you can see this, are all anger tweets on Donald Trump. Okay? And you know why, in what context people are expressing anger. Right? And you can look at the tweets, um, you know, uh, once illegal, uh, you know, whatever that is, right? And then you can look up who are these people talking about it, and what are so many many things you can do about. It. You can you can study uh, location. So for example, in the e drug trends. Huh? Without when you ask the e drug trends, that noises that Oh, that's sep okay. All right. So uh, I won't do that. But you get an idea now, right? Uh, and then. Um, you can find out the entities that are important, people, places. You can look up the uh, network and so on and so forth. Right? I, which one is this? Oh, this is this campaign is not being run, so let me change. So this is about Hillary Clinton and so on and so forth. So you get a sense now of a um, uh, variety of things we can do with Twitter, right? Yeah. Small parallel to Esper, given its the fact that it's runtime was changeable, or yeah, it was changeable at runtime and it stayed in issue queries in the running system. Um, the, did you show the classifiers feature? Mm -hmm. that allows you to add a new rule and then that gets assigned. To yes. The e e so, so um, e um, Forcing you to register mm -hmm. and yeah. playing in the tweet is online because you, you may be interested in changing the topology of the TV network according what the actual, actual filter you want to do on the fly. Because uh, let's say you have like different streams, and of course the relevance change over time also. Okay, and if you keep all the network active, it will be very expensive and unusable, uh, useless. But if you change the topology too much. You will waste a lot of a lot of uh, resource because the query are not garbage, you know. So right. uh, we, something that we have to study is also the fact that uh, I don't know how Storm does it, but it's very yeah. same problem. You know, Owen is a very technical problem. Mm. Uh, actually, I want to add this that if you look at the interface, it's interesting how the a very technical problem how the, how the was the window, the definition of the part of the stream is, is uh, bring it to a level of a uh, usability problem now. So, uh, so the problem, practical problem we face is that um, most of the tools in the market or almost everything else is are far simpler. And so for the users, it is very hard for them to even imagine this is possible. And they don't expect this kind of stuff. So uh, there is a big thing when you are two steps ahead of the market, these are challenges that you face um, uh, and, um, and but uh, I'll give you one very interesting example uh, there's a lot more here than what I am showing you but let me give one interesting example 
being able to define the campaign correctly, meaning what exactly you are interested in is very important. So, we have this campaign for e-drug trends. What is it e-drug trends dot? No, sir? Now, this is for you know actual projects. So, we have about uh, 6 million dollars worth of projects that uses this uh, system and uh, go ahead. So, here what, what, is, what happened is that this, the, this, this thing about the use of uh, marijuana and synthetic cannabinoids and one of the synthetic cannabinoid, one of the synthetic drug is called spice. So, we put a keyword spice and um, we got all kinds of spice including pumpkin spice latte right. And of course, spice is used in food and that is not what you are interested in. You are used, you're interested in spice the drug, the chemical drug right? that makes you high and it has bad side effects. So, um, uh, you have to figure out a way the system allows you to say I am interested in this spice, but not that spice and this is not an easy problem. So, this is an important semantic problem where you have to say how would you disambiguate the concept of spice. Uh, and and there are countless example like that, which is very important. Just using keyword based thing really give pretty bad results. So, you being able to uh, specify, you can also use these rules to uh, create this classifier as we call it, uh, but basically they are complex rules saying uh, if this then that and what is it IFTTT, what was it IFTTT? Yeah. This then that. If, if, the, if this then that kind of things and you can specify those rules and um, uh, you know the system automatically uh, would allow you to um, analyze things that match that particular rule. What we do is uh, we, we put keywords in Twitter for recall, so as many keywords as uh, you, hmm. you can to maximize recall hmm. and then we have uh, a negation rule. Hmm. At the very after recalling, hmm. that basically try to improve uh, precision. Hmm. So that's so we do. That's we do that's have. That's the way it is. Okay. We do. All, we have not also, but we also have synonyms. We also have stop words. Uh, many yeah. Uh, yeah. that kind of stuff. We have. Filter we, bias. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm. Filter Go ahead. Bias, you, do you use also the taxonomy, or just the? Yeah. So, um, in the election you have taxonomy of uh, you saw harmful dra uh, you know violent harmful practices and you know sexual violence and all that that is a taxonomy. Uh, we you know here you have a, a synthetic drug and natural and the synthetic you have uh, you know sub classes and all that. So, there is a um, uh, uh, drug ontology yeah. for example and that that can be used here. But do you have access to the firewalls of Twitter? Or are you coding? Yep. No, no, but we are. We will have uh, access to the, pa you know, the GNIP uh, thing. Uh, hopefully, yeah. we tried sometime. This, uh, we didn't get at much advantage. Mm. Mm. Is what the Deca house ten percent stream? Or no, but the point. Track? Maybe it's not of interest of mm. everybody. Right, yeah. Maybe we we take mm. it off. Okay. You wanted to explain the these classifiers, right? The IFTTT. You can thing. give an example here. Yeah. yeah, and then one is just for the like the Iowa primaries. You can you can tag specific tweets. Um, you can filter by location or a number of these clauses here. You can have any number of rules, so you're creating these rules on the fly that get tagged to the tweets that come in in the future. So, for example, you can say anything that comes from Iowa, the United States. Um, and it falls under the Hillary Rodney Clinton category, tag that as Hillary in Iowa. And then you can filter out the topics, sentiment, emotion, et cetera, all by that tag. Um, we have the number of followers. If we want to see only people who are influential on Twitter and see what the influential people only are saying and all sorts of different clauses like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you should be using mic. <laughs> <Not too laughs> okay. All right. So, um, 
Yeah, so this is uh, IFTTT kind of uh, thing uh, where if the location is United States Iowa and category is or tweet contains or variety of different sentiment is many different ways and you can have multiple of those things, right? That allows you for very precise specification and categorization of the tweets that you have. And then the things become very interesting when you add to this Instagram and uh, customer provided data. This system also has been extended to use forum data at the same time with the Twitter data. So, um, and, and then let me, uh, all right. So, any questions here? Yes. Hmm. In the context of like, like so many people there would not have access to Twitter and stuff. Um, so, is there a way to like identify like if someone is tweeting that they need to be rescued? So, is there a way to identify how many people would be rescuing there, or they, or there would be like a, a, a an area where they would where there would be more people who would need rescuing than the other area? Well, yeah. Okay. The question is, uh, you know, there are circumstances where tweets may not be, you know, Twitter may not be used much. Uh, that, that happens, but uh, two points. One is that indeed Twitter was extensively used. Okay. So, um, um, if you come to a realistic situation like that, um, uh, army rescue office can only do so many sorting. It is too bad perhaps for people who did not use Twitter, but army of uh, the whatever capacity there was for uh, rescue was all used up. Okay. So, it is just that some people got lucky because they used right medium. That is one answer, not a good answer for people who you know suffered because they did not use the right medium. Okay. But the second answer is that um, uh, there is no technological limitation. Uh, so, during the earlier we had run another campaign for Pakistan floods. In that case we had access to SMS data. So, people use SMS essentially and in the context of emergency. Uh, if you are allowed the SMS, SMS access, there are some parts in a, some things you do not have in SMS that you know the amount of metadata the tweet has you do not have in SMS. But there are other things and maybe there is enough. So, in that case uh, you know uh, during the Pakistan floods of 2012, uh, NGOs extensively use SMS and they use SMS carefully with giving lot more details than you know removing the informality and imprecision of tweets. So, they would spell out the location completely and say you know whatever they have to say. And those to tweet, uh, those po SMS were very informative and we were able to uh, use that and analyze them and show how you can use it in that context also. So, um, the technical limitations are all transient. It is like the following, a, um, how many users were there 5 years ago, but how many users there are now, you know it is a different deal right. Um, there are, um, uh, there are some people, uh, you know, five years ago, majority people had uh, still feature phones. Today, uh, um, significant majority of the phones that are sold are smartphones, meaning uh, practically every, you know, person getting new phones uh, has a smartphone with price point. You know, uh, today, uh, dr a taxi driver in Mumbai uh, buys smartphone because he wants to use Facebook. Right and, and and such, so um, and farmers basically use cell phone and uh, farmers, um, you know, they they want to see weather on cell phone. They, all these things. A lot of people don't use um, uh, desktop computer and laptop. Uh, they don't have computers, but they have mobile phone. Internet access or mobile phone is significantly cheaper than trying to get it on you know uh, fixed line and other things like that. So there are many reasons where things have become mobile, things have become smartphone, things have become social media. And the variety of social media is all there. The biggest challenge are in certain circumstances. For example, Snapchat. What we, we unfortunately, you know, it's a, it's a choice that the medium has made, and uh, you have to pay Snapchat to get every, uh, you, know, you know. So now uh, there is a feature to actually retrieve Snapchat, but you, it will cost you a lot of money, and that's the kind of thing we cannot easily do here. Technically, there is no limitation, but it's a limitation. There are business limitation basically, and so be it. But then, if government uses that, they can give us the tweet uh, or Snapchat deals. I think they have access to that. <laughs> and, and you should think of big, big players like the telco operators or Google or Facebook itself or Twitter itself that actually can do that. I mean, here, me or Dr. 
shelf at the limit that we do not access all, all those data. Mm. But if you are a telecom company, you have the text of the SMS, and you are allowed to use them. And then the, the privacy law, for instance, in Italy says that uh, you're not allowed to reveal the text, of course. But uh, nobody prevents you to do exactly the same techniques and uh, to come up with the same services at the only rule that you should not reveal people's positions or people's sentiment. But I mean, in this kind of situation, it's, per it's per perfectly fine, right? So I mean, things that looks like uh, technically difficult from us because it's research, for somebody else is simply standard business. So I believe that to us, we have to show that this is doable and yeah. maybe also try to do some business around it, why not? But then I mean, it's somebody else that can take the place and do it at scale, right? Because unless you have the power in terms of machine, computation and business money, you will never bring it to the right scale. But I mean, this is proving that it makes sense. Yeah, the, you know, we have to show, the first and foremost, this is, uh, this starts at a research, an academic research. And so we are training you all that and you'll go to companies and build yeah. products. Second, um, you know, this <laughs> became robust, so we are doing some real stuff where there's real content. Yes, there are also cases where in the current form there are challenges, but they are not technological challenges. They are, you know, uh, access challenges and such, right? So, um, Another great source are the URLs that you put uh, wh while you do anything. So the, your, your browsing activity and uh, the tech operator as it all. They know exactly what you are entering for every people in the nation, right? And that is an incredible source of exactly the same information because they know wh what you're looking at. They can go check the content of a page. Techniques may be different because the test is longer, but I mean, that's another great source of information. But for instance, none of us can access because we don't have enough mm. uh, logs, okay? Mm. But uh, if you are in, in such a company and you get the right, uh, I mean, uh, things done with the privacy regulation, then you can do them. Now, uh, we have another project called Social Head Signals, where we are um, not just using tweets, but we're using all the links in the tweets. Yeah. And so in this case, uh, we are focusing on healthcare, uh, consumer healthcare, consumer need for healthcare information and news, and um, uh, vast amount of medical information, whether it is somebody's opinion, whether somebody's observation side effect or symptoms, whether it is a um, uh, opinion on the medical literature, new article that just came and the clinical study uh, in its outcome are reported, a new drug is approved or all those things are, uh, you know, show up as links in the tweets. And so we harvest them and we analyze actually the text itself, you know, which are like news items and blogs and things like that in the pictures in them. So you can analyze them and then you can again further enhance, uh, you know, your analysis. So, uh, yes, uh, Hussein. Mm -hmm. Google is part of uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned. Um, <coughs> there was one project that they collaborate with the, with the UNESCO, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then they started monitoring the SMS magazine messages in an uh, infected area. So that's as of then Twitter. I mean. mm -hmm. So that's one part of it. Sure. Yeah, the service is called SMS Gupshop in India that can give you access to the SMS addresses. So the, there are options around that. For us, you know, whether there's in enough of a technical case or not, but uh, if, you, if you look at, for example, uh, uh, you know, uh, projects uh, at, uh, uh, so, so uh, if you look at, um, so here is a, a project uh, at Noesis called Context Aware Harassment of Social Media. And, uh, again, you know, Twitter is, is uh, directly relevant and useful for that. Then uh, there is a uh, project here uh, called um, uh, Social and Physical Sensing Enable Decision Support. Again, uh, Twitteris is directly useful here. It's a couple of million dollar project. Then there is um, uh, Project Safe Neighborhood. Again, uh, what we are doing here, Project uh, Westwood to prevent juvenile repeated uh, offenders. Again, Twitteris and the underlying technology is useful here. Then there is um, uh, uh, e-drug trends we talked about. Again, you know, Twitter is useful here. And then there is um, 
uh, uh, market innovation and scaling up of treaties. Again, this is uh, commercial, you know, going towards commercialization of treaties here. And then there is a uh, depression, uh, you know, modeling social behavior in healthcare uh, utilization. Uh, again, treaties is uh, very key here. This is a very, let me end with this particular thing. So, this one has access to Twitter data. Uh, and we will have access to a GNIP, uh, meaning a much larger source than the streaming media API. Uh, we have such query logs access. So, we will have 1 billion query log from Microsoft Bing. We would have patient like me data, uh, which is the, you know, which is a very important social network uh, for discussing patient link. We will have census data, we will have survey data, we will have area resources files, we will have country rankings. We have electronic medical records and we will have medical claims data. Ima um, I know, imagine this is an uh, amazing project and uh, we are very proud to have won this. This is, uh, uh, you know, we currently have uh, well over 7.5 million dollars of uh, actively funded projects. Um, this one uh, now is in collaboration with, um, uh, it was, for, you know, co with Mayo Clinic, but then the, uh, my, uh, there are two PIs, myself and uh, Jyotishman Pathak and Jyotishman has moved to um, um, uh, Cornell Research, uh, Cornell Medical School. But you can see, you know, the collaborators involved here and all that. So, all these are using the technology that I described today, right? Exciting. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed today and um, we'll have again, uh, uh, hopefully, very interesting stuff tomorrow. So, see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock.